This issue, this prostitution, sex trafficking stuff, it's ultimately about a conflation between force and freedom. And that conflation is codified in the law, in U.S. law, and, and in some state law at this point, and in a few other countries at least, that I know of at least a few. And it's the same conflation that you'll find in radical feminist theory. And people have asked me before, and I've heard it asked of other people, you know, why do you blame radical feminism for this? Did they really do it? You know, are they the ones responsible? Are they to blame for all this mess that you complain about all the time? And, and the truth is that, yes, they do get some of the blame. They, do, they get a lot of the blame from where I sit, actually. For example, 12 years ago, a little over 12 years ago, there were two anti-trafficking bills proposed. And they were sort of in competition with each other. And one of them included this conflation. One of them didn't. And radical feminists, some very prominent feminist leaders, radical and not so technically radical, or, you know, they wouldn't claim to be radical, but they all came forward in strong support of the bill that had this conflation in it. Because it had the conflation in it. And they opposed, they strongly opposed the other bill because it didn't have that conflation. You know, and, uh, like, I saw that video that Dewada Man uploaded, Department of State recording, and they had this tutorial or something to teach you about human trafficking. And then they go through this definition of human trafficking, which I thought was really laughable. Because that was not, the, there's no, there's nothing called human trafficking in the U.S. federal code, in the legal code, and in any of these states where they're trying to put in the new language. The way trafficking is actually defined, the words they, uh, the words they use for the charges, there's, there is severe forms of trafficking in persons, and then there is this other separate section called sex trafficking. Now, the severe forms of trafficking in persons has two subsections. One of them covers a form of sex trafficking, the severe form of sex trafficking, where it includes or requires force, fraud, coercion, or for the person to be under the age of 18, a legal minor. That's how the law is set up. That little tutorial thing was only giving you the definition of the severe form of sex trafficking. You know, the State Department doesn't want you to understand that there's a whole other section about sex trafficking, just plain old sex trafficking, where it's really, yeah, it's about movement. You know, where it doesn't matter if, you're, if you've freely chosen it, if you're going from one place to another to engage in sex work, to engage in, you know, a commercial sex act. You're sex trafficked. If someone helped to arrange your travel and picked you up at the airport and gave you a place to stay while you were wherever you went to, that's your sex trafficker. That's the way that it's written in the law in the U.S. Code. There's severe sex trafficking, where you're forced, defrauded, or, co or coerced, and then there's just regular sex trafficking. But when you hear about statistics and you hear all of their propaganda and the marketing about this issue, they don't make sure to explain that to people. To give these estimates of hundreds of thousands of, of, you know, I'm even hearing estimates of millions at this point when they're talking about it on an international level. But I know that when they are doing those estimates, they're throwing in this prostitution stuff. I know that. I know that just because you read a media account of some sex trafficking, you can't assume that there was force, fraud, coercion involved. You can't assume that. Some articles will even say, oh, this person was accused of severe sex trafficking. They'll put the fucking severe word in there. I, I know that a lot of people don't even realize that that's actually a word in the law. You know, that's not just a descriptor that some journalist to try, decided to put in there. That's an actual word in the law. It should make you ask, well, hmm, what's non-severe trafficking? What's that all about? Well, that's the stuff that doesn't require forced fraud coercion. It's just about moving from one place to another to engage in prostitution. And Booba was right about that definition. And I've been, you know, my head's been spinning watching everybody like, hey, let's prove Boo Boo wrong. It does have it does require force. No, it doesn't. She was right about that. I agree with Boo Boo on that explanation that she gave. And if I'm agreeing with Boo Boo, if I'm saying she's right, that should tell you something right there. <laughs> you know? And she'll probably try to backpedal at this point. You know. Because she wants people to think that there's force fraud coercion in there. She's she buys into that. You know, the radical feminist conflation of these things, of force and freedom. So yeah, I put blame on those radical feminist leaders who supported that bill and got it passed and insisted on this, you know, choice out of no choice conceptualization of prostitution. I blame them. I blame the antis here on YouTube 
for being such hateful bitches all the time, for trying to obscure the issues, for trying to misrepresent us and not even tell people what our actual concerns are. It gets very frustrating because the antis tell everybody that we come forward and say that we chose this because we think it's a wonderful thing and it's no big deal and we just want to talk about sex work. Yay. I don't know if the antis actually think that's why we come out to talk about it. But I know they tell, tell other people that's why we talk about it. You know, boo-boo going on about, oh, well, if you say it's just sex, then why blah, blah, blah. Because really what we're talking about, it doesn't have much to, to do with sex. It's about this legal codification of this conflation. You know, we have to come forward and say that we chose it. And we have to come forward and say, hey, we had crappy choices and we still chose it. And we do that because we understand there's this conflation in the law. And they're counting on people remaining silent. They're counting on, on them being able to, you know, use these numbers of, of nameless, faceless people who the antis and the abolitionists of the world claim didn't actually choose it. You know, they'll tell you, oh, these people didn't actually choose it. It's a choice out of no choice. They're economically coerced. Don't you understand? Do you really think that's much of a choice? Oh, come on now. Do you really think that's really a choice? Not many people will come back and say, yeah, I do think it's a choice because it sounds heartless and, and terrible. And I know that I sound heartless and terrible when I say it. Yeah, I do think that's a choice. Yeah, I think it's a choice. And I say that because I know that the conflation is in the law and I know that these people, they're using that sympathy that people have. They're using it to enable their authoritarian agenda, their conflationary authoritarian agenda. In the way they attack us, it's, it's, a pretty, it's, it's a really nasty trick because other people out there in the world, they see how we get treated. You know, we, they see what they say about us and they see the names they call us and the, all that stuff. Like uh, in the Divs video, she's talking about Boo Boo had said once, oh, these women on, these sex workers on, on YouTube, they're all psychologically scarred, but let's not push them to admit it yet. You know, people don't want to come to YouTube and talk about this stuff and then have other people speculate on their psychological health. People don't want to come to YouTube and talk about this stuff and then have other people call them a cum dump. You know, you've heard them. You've seen them. The names they call us. Yeah, and, and the people that say this crap, that call us these names, they're the ones that say they really care about all the people who are making these choices, you know, because they're economically coerced and desperate. Oh, they care so much. But if those people who you care so much about knew what's really going on in the law and they really knew what's at stake. And if they came forward and said, yeah, I had crappy choices, but I chose it too. These antis would turn around and call them cum dumps too. Because they attack. They'll attack as soon as you stop supporting their authoritarian ideology through your silence. They will attack you. And I, I, I've seen it many times and it makes me sad to see people who, who come out. You know, they make a blog or they make a YouTube channel and they talk about their experiences. They just want to talk about their own lives and what they've learned and shit they've gone through. And if their stories include these sorts of topics, the attack comes. You know, and these are people who just, like I said, they just want to talk about their own lives and their feelings and their experiences. And it's very easy for these antis to shut those people up. If I was just out here to talk about my own stuff and yay, here's what I've learned about life and stuff, I wouldn't put up, I would go away too. I wouldn't, I, they would have scared me away for sure. The only reason I stay here is because I understand about this conflation in the law. And I know that once people understand that, they start paying a lot more attention to this shit. I'm not just here to talk about, you know, rainbows and kittens and this day I cried one time. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for this one. I'm about talked out. So uh, thank you for listening, <clears throat> and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.